Workshop Topics Part 4 Making some simple drilling jigs First of all, if you watch this extract from a previous video, it should explain things. A friend of mine makes these, and I think they're really wonderful. When I first saw this, I bought it off him immediately. He's going to make them commercially. They're not very expensive, and for me, these are the ultimate in workshop lamps. As soon as my friend gets his website up and running, I will do a feature on these because he does a whole range of them. But for the moment, this is just a sneak preview. I would like to take this opportunity to apologise for the wine stains on the kitchen table. I live with my daughter Charlotte and her partner because sadly, my wife is no more. She moved into a flat. It was either that or the acid bath. These wine stains were left over from the other week when it was Charlotte's 30th birthday and it occurs to me that both Charlotte and her partner and their friends seem to have a drink problem because they spill most of it on the kitchen table. So this is just one of the range of lamps that my friend makes, and they're all fitted with a lampshade, and each lampshade needs a hole in it big enough to take the light fitting. And for this he uses a punch, but first of all he needs to make a pilot hole exactly in the centre of the lampshade. I tried freehand drilling one with a 10mm drill bit and it looked really messy. And also it marked the paint, which is not a good idea on a new item. Going straight in with a 10mm drill was really bad, it really chewed up the metal. I've hammered it out a little bit, but as you can see, the hole is far from neat. So what I need to do is make drilling jigs for each of these components, which won't mark the paint, and allow a quarter of an inch diameter hole to be drilled accurately in the centre of the lampshade. And I'm going to make these drilling jigs out of a piece of mahogany. I was going to make them out of metal, but no, that would mark the paint. So making these drilling jigs out of a piece of thick mahogany seemed like a good idea. I'm going to start by holding one of the lampshades on top of the mahogany and drawing round it with a felt tip pen, followed by drawing round another lampshade. I'm trying to be quite economic with the mahogany. This marking out does not need to be very accurate as long as I have a shape to cut to on the bandsaw. Then just for a change I'm drawing round another lampshade base. All I have to do now is draw round the base of the very small one. And now it's time to cut on the lines using my small bandsaw. This bandsaw is great, it's a Burgess bandsaw, it's really old and it does everything that I throw at it. I've speeded up the clip just to save time on the video. All I have to do is carefully cut around the lines so I end up with four circular blocks of mahogany. A quick health and safety warning. As you can see, this blade is quite sharp as it's cutting very thick mahogany. And always concentrate on what you're doing. If you get bored with it, go away and do something else. And that way you will survive the operation and end up with four nice neatly cut round pieces of mahogany and a full complement of fingers. The problem is of course that these pieces of mahogany do not fit in the recess at the bottom of the lampshade because the line was drawn around the outside of the lampshade. I could have used a pair of calipers, measured the inside, transferred this to a compass and then marked out a very accurate line followed by very carefully cutting them out on the bandsaw but no, I prefer this method. All I'm doing here is finding the center of these pieces of mahogany by using a ruler. Just by taking several measurements across the piece of wood, I can make a mark in the center of the piece of wood that's fine for what I need it to be. Some of these marks in the center are not really going to be 100% in the center, but they're near enough for rock and roll. The next thing to do is to drill a quarter of an inch diameter hole on the center marks of each of the pieces of wood. This will allow me to put a bolt through the middle of the pieces of wood and mount them in the lathe chuck. This is the last one being drilled and now it's over to my small boxford lathe. I'm using a quarter of an inch diameter Allen caphead bolt. The Allen caphead is clamped in the chuck and on the other end, first of all, a washer goes on followed by a nut. But I need to do more than this because if I start turning this piece of wood, it's going to jump out of the chuck. I'm going to center drill the end as you can see, the mahogany and the washer is not very accurate, but the centre part of the bolt is accurate enough for what I'm doing. I need to drill quite a deep centre, and after I've done this, I'm going to use a live centre in the tailstock to support the outer edge of the bolt. 
and at this point, before Inspector Meticulous and all his contemporaries write in to tell me off, yes, I know it's not 100%, but it doesn't need to be. This is not a part for a satellite, or a gas turbine, or a rocket. It's just a simple drilling jig for drilling holes in the bottom of metal plant pots, which are going to be used to make the lampshades for these lamps that my friend makes. Here's the live centre going into position. So all I need to do now is rotate the work and use a lathe tool to cut it to the right size. I do need to know what the finished diameter of the mahogany needs to be, and for this I'm using a set of calipers. And then it's time to do some mahogany turning. Mahogany turns very well with a very sharp lathe tool. You do need to make sure the tool is sharp though. Checking frequently with the set of calipers is a good idea because I don't want to make it too small. Otherwise it's back to the drawing board. That's one done. Here's a shot of the allen bolt in the chuck. Then I fitted the next mahogany blank and did the same with that. As you can see here, I finished off the outer edge using a piece of emery cloth. Health and safety advice, when you're doing a job like this, the mahogany makes a lot of dust, so it's a good idea to wear a breathing mask. And possibly an attractive party hat as well. But that's entirely at the discretion of the operator. I'm using my trusty Henry vacuum cleaner to clean up the lathe because all this sawdust all over the lathe is very bad for it. It doesn't wear anything, but it soaks up the oil, and the lack of oil is going to be a problem. I almost forgot I used a file to file the edges of the wood just to make it smooth. And now to test the principle. My friend uses a pillar drill, I'm using a small hand drill, and I'm doing it very slowly on purpose, just for the video. There's plenty of wood to get hold of to hold it securely in position, and in no time at all, hole number one is drilled. I repeated the process for one of the larger of the lampshades, and once again, it's very comfortable to hold these formers in position. Obviously, over time, the centre hole's going to wear because it's only wood. I explained to my friend that all I needed to do then was bring the parts back to me, I would put them in the chuck, drill out the hole in the centre, and fit a metal bush. And then, once the metal bush is worn, I can tap that out and fit another one. And I could go on forever doing that, so these are really everlasting drilling jigs for plant pots to make lampshades with. So I think he's going to be happy with these, they certainly do the job. And in case you haven't done already, please consider joining Patreon. Patreon is currently about 40 videos ahead of the ones on YouTube. And if you're a Patreon subscriber watching this video, I thank you very much for your help. It really makes a difference. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.